Petrogoff, the summer palace on Finland Bay, absolutely stunning. This is the road entrance into Petrogoff. We've taken the Yandex taxi today. It actually works out a lot cheaper if there's two or more of you. You can take the Meteor or the Hydrofoil. Yep, you can see there's quite a lineup coming in from the road. The taxi, that taxi is um, 1200 rubles for a uh, smaller car. We took the 1600 rubles for the luxury one, and if it would have been uh, 3000 by hydrofoil, so if there's four of you, it would cost 6000. And taxi was still only 1200 or 1600, much cheaper if there's a group of you. So, if you had taken the economy car, it would have only been about $25 Australian. Our ticket office. Oh, really At this point, if you look Russian, or you have a Russian friend buy tickets, it will be half the cost. Yeah, we'll just come through the entrance. Put it off. You can see this typical, very large crowd. What I've found with Russian attractions over the years is that you pay to get in and then you pay to get inside the building. I have been to Spassi Solo twice and each time you go there you have to pay to get in the car park, then you pay to get into the grounds and then you pay to go inside of the actual palace itself. So you pay three times. Uh, there's a large lineup for tickets to go inside. They go in at, at uh, different times. The uh, group go in at a few at a time. Like every, I didn't pay to go in this time, as I have been inside before. I will include a few photographs at the end, just a few to show you what it's like. These gardens are 414 hectares and it's very easy to spend the entire day looking through these amazing gardens. I've only touched on some of the highlights from some of the gardens. You stand here, stimulate all of your senses. The smell, the sight, the sound, and even the feel and the taste with the water cascading, blowing across on the breeze. <laughs> Heading down through the lower gardens towards where the hydrofoil comes in across the Bay of Finland. Thank you.
сели. This fountain is called the Adam Fountain. This is on the east side of the garden. On the west side, there's an identical one called the Eve Fountain. You can change your clothes here and get changed into costumes of the period and have your photographs taken. Uh, what I remember, I believe this house is made from coral. At this point we hired a little train to go around some of the garden. This beautiful little residence is built right on the Gulf. On the western side of the This wall that runs the entire length of the section around the orchard is on the ocean side of the windward side. It was obviously built to keep the wind out from the orchard. Orchard grows apples, yabaka and cherries. The small palace on the left is called the Marble Palace. Alexei was sitting beside me, used to be part of a dance troupe that used to do ballroom and Latin demonstrations here. Сегодня в этих прудах разводят и 
После полудня, 4 часа, против Петергофа и Малаяка. К вечеру пришли в Петербург. Этот день считается датой основания Петергофа. Нижний парк полностью восстановлен. Справа вы видите еще один каскад. Он называется Золотая гора. Так как его сливные щиты облицованы облаченными пластинами. И когда вода льется вниз, создается экономный. Глядя на эти фонтаны, создается впечатление огромного расхода воды. Но это зрительный обман. Водяной столб внутри полый. Воды расходуется очень мало. Насадку для этого фонтана сделал сам Петр Первый. И с тех пор принцип действия фонтана остается неизменным. Справа фонтаны колокола. Их украшают бронзовые скульптуры и тонны. Андрей Ивановича Штакеншмейдера в мастерской трескорни из белого мрамора и украшена вазами из яшмы и портира. Ее венчает мраморный бюст и идет ордельное открытие. Мы с вами отправляемся в путь от самой большой площади восточной части Нижнего парка. И ее территория один из дальше. Она напоминает нарядный сварочный зон, открывшийся в открытом месте. Площадь украшает два фонтана. И в замысле восходит первый четверг в 18 столице. Мы применяемся они в 1839 году по проекту Бланка и даже Кулья. Здесь трудилась триляда выдающихся мастеров. Франческо Бартоланео Рассадельни, Юрий Матвеевич Фельдин, Андрей Никифорович Фельдин. Самая большая стрелья – это... Magnificent. You can see why my opinion is that this is the most beautiful garden in the world. I don't know about you, but I swear this statue is looking at this woman. Truly outstanding, the flowers and the statues in combination in this garden.
just a few brief photographs from my previous trip into Petrogoff as I did not go inside this time. Uh, heading out through the exit, uh, we're about to go and get a bite to eat. It is always far cheaper to eat outside of the attraction, never in if you can help it. Make sure you take water with you on your travels, that way you don't have to buy bottles inside at a much dearer price. There are toilets inside of the gardens, there's definitely one on the east side and I'm pretty sure there's one on the west side. They are free to use. July to August is always a fantastic time to visit Russia if you're not looking for the snow. Um, they have the beautiful white nights back before July. Um, that's something, it's an amazing sight to see. Heading back to St. Petersburg after a wonderful day in Petrogoff. If you love this video, please subscribe or like it. And I look forward to uh, having you with us to follow more of our travels. Uh, pretty shortly we leave from St. Petersburg and we head to uh, Finland by car across the border. Looking forward to having you with us to continue our journey across Europe and then on to our cruise through the Mediterranean.